So if you've clicked on this video, then you're wondering about the um, mounting that I've got for the downward mount. This is the box. So I've already unboxed it because I wanted to show you what it looked like. It's called the Desk Mounting Stand, the LSO2. And it is made by the gym. Okay, so I'm filming this on my phone. I've got my phone as stable as possible so that it doesn't cause you any distress. And the other box here, oh, by the way, my phone is the Google Pixel 8, not the Pro, just the regular 8. This is the cell desk phone stand for your hands, and it is made by a company called Terion. I am not an affiliate with Amazon, but I will post the links um, for these products so that you can find them. So if you watch my other video, I talked about these little clips. So if you haven't seen that, please click on that video. I buy these products myself, so any support from you would be greatly appreciated. So if you want to hit like and subscribe, if you appreciate the blue collar guy perspective on videos, uh, that would be great. And uh, anyways, um, I'm going to swap these two cameras around again. So I'm just going to take this one off and I'm going to move my action camera back to its original stand. And I'm going to take my pocket three and I'm going to put it up back on here. So now this is stand for the pocket three that I've got. And the reason why I picked this one is because if I want to have a first person view with my pocket three, I can do that. Oops, sorry. And if I want to just push it back and have a view of me, I can do that as well. So it's a very economical stand. I think it was about $30. And this other one, I think, was about 60 some dollars. So it was a little bit more expensive. But as you can see, it is quite elaborate and quite solid. It's got a very, very well built steel bar here. It's either steel or galvanized steel or thick aluminum and it can hold a DSLR no problem and I've got it fixed to my Sony uh, ZV-E10 right now and as you can see I've got the downward shot you can see my hand in my video monitor so if I want to do a video shot of that and then I've just got my remote control so then I can zoom in on the uh, oh, oh, watch it probably isn't going to work now there we go so now it's it's uh, zooming in on the uh, the uh, desk here. So if I have a if you have a downward shot, you can uh, you can get that in there. So, and then I've got my Google Pixel tablet, which by the way um, I did another video on that, so you should check that out because I use this for my editing. And because it behaves a lot like a cell phone, if you like to edit your videos on your phone, this is a perfect companion for you. So if you have this in a Google phone, I have no complaints whatsoever. So now if you're wondering what this little device over here is, this is a power station. So it has got, um, whoops, sorry, I turned on the light. It has got a 600 watt yeah 600 watt output it's a UPS so I don't have to worry about anything failing so even during a power outage my YouTube channel is fully functional plus I can use it to power other things I have several power stations we do get a lot of blackouts here in Montreal unfortunately especially if there's an ice storm the power could be out for two or three days and you will spend any amount of money to get that power back trust me so that is the setup that i have now one thing i will show you is i have a softbox light over there i don't want to shine it right into the camera and that is how we can get that now uh, we will go to the other cameras to show you what it actually looks like now from the other side 
and then you can see the advantages of uh, doing that. But I wanted to show you what the cameras actually look like on it, so this is that shot. So now we're going to go and I'm going to show you the DJI uh, Osmo Pocket 3 um, angle, I guess. Okay, so bear with me and we will go to that. Okay, so we're back on, uh, this is the, I'm being filmed by the DJI Osmo Pocket 3, of course. And it is on that arm that I showed you earlier. I have two of those. I have another setup for, uh, I have like a little light box with a rotisserie thing so I can put products on there. And I also have the, um, uh, uh, you know, I put the ZVE-10 as the downward shot. So the ZVE-10 right now is doing my downward shot on my desk uh, above this. So I, I wanted to get something that was a little more solid feeling and that's why I recommend uh, this bar if you're doing um, you know a desk setup because my camera's not that heavy but some DSLRs with big lenses can get quite heavy. So and by the way the ZV-10 that's doing the downward shot that you're going to see is just using the Ket lens and I'm using the remote control that I got. Uh, this is an aftermarket remote and it'll do the zoom in and out and it works just fine. I don't see anything wrong with using the kit lens for the downward shot myself. If you disagree, please let me know. I'm gonna add a little bit more light to the subject. I turned it off earlier because of the, um, you know, the washout effect. So there we go. So I've got the other light on now. So as you can see, different kinds of lighting. Soft box lighting is good. Uh, as far as uh, not uh, overly washing out your skin and then the other lights are kind of like a fill light. So you've got your main light and then your fill light. Uh, it seems a little complicated but it's, it's not really that bad. So anyways my setup is probably one of the more economical setups. I try to do things as, as cheap as possible but without sacrificing as much quality. You know um, now if you look at some YouTube videos and some YouTubers and they're talking about, you know, inexpensive gear and, oh yeah, this is great and that's great, they're filming on $30,000 worth of equipment. So to me, that's not really fair because they don't really disclose that. You know, they're talking about one item, but yet they're talking, you know, they're using another item. Uh, I seen one video and I'm not going to name any names because they know who they are. Um, He's talking about uh, a microphone, so he's he's praising this one microphone, but he's using a two thousand dollar microphone to record his voice. So everything that I tell you about, I'm using. Okay, I'm not, um, you know, uh, using better equipment on myself and then trying to. Uh, praise up another piece of equipment and the reason why this happens is they're sending that, them the equipment for free and of course it's you know even though they're saying my thoughts are my own and this and that they're getting stuff for free and they can turn around and they can sell it later and make money off of that and that's all great I got nothing against that if you can make extra money more power to you um, but when you get into morals and you're talking uh, about uh, honest reviews and I know I'll give you an example of a really good honest YouTuber and uh, check out Project Farm and he buys all the equipment himself he tests it he destroys it if he if it's a stress test and uh, he relies solely on YouTube video support and I like that format and that's the kind of the format that you know I was originally going to go with the other type of format until I started wrestling with my own conscience on you know can I be honest about products if they're sending them to me for free um, now if a company does send me a product for free and they want me to review it I will okay but I'm not going to give you an opinion whether I like it or don't like it. I'm going to remain completely neutral on the subject. I'm just going to show you the product. I'm going to say this is what it is, this is what it does, and this is how much it costs. 
I'm going to um, I'm going to not put my opinion in it at all. And um, I think that would be more honest than just feeding you some lines saying, you know, my opinions are my own, that sort of thing. So anyways, I really do like my Osmo Pocket 3 for a studio setup. I think it is an excellent camera for that. It's got the wireless mic already. It's very clean setup. Uh, it's got your 10-bit. Uh, it can do HDR. It's just a really good uh, camera for that. And with this arm, and I'm going to show you, because I'm going to bring you a little bit closer over here now. So I'm going to stretch out the arm a bit. And it's kind of like fully extended because I got it in the corner. Now I'm going to click it so that it faces the other way. So I'm going to give it a click. And there we go. So now if I'm doing a first person shot with this camera, I can, I, I've got a lot of maneuvering ability. And I can get right in there if I need to. And, uh, you know, and... You know, I would imagine that, you know, as far as the articulation goes on this unit, um, it would be kind of, you know, uh, you know, it's not perfect, but it wasn't that expensive either. And for everything that it does, like I can get a nice shot of the my Google Pixel tablet. So if I wanted to get a, you know, go into my tablet, I can bring that a little bit closer. You know, they do have zoom on the uh, Pocket 3, and I guess it's not bad. So if I if I go to zoom in on there, this is the zoom on the uh, Pocket 3. So it's not horrible, you know. And, you know, I can go in and I can say, hey, you know, we're going to this site or whatever and talk about certain things. So the Osmo Pocket 3 is probably the best... Uh, inexpensive studio setup that you can get as far as professional gimbal and you know um, you know that sort of thing you can take it out walking around do some outside vlogging and I showed you the you know the I did a video on these quick releases so that you can swap it around pretty easy the battery lasts a long time and the upload is phenomenal when you're uploading. So I really like that on this uh, unit. So I'm gonna just click this around again and get me back in the shot. And it's got the face track already on there. So now I'm just gonna put you back and I'm going to unzoom myself because I had it on zoom. So um, we will take that off and um, then I will click on there and there we go. So, you know, it's this arm isn't like utterly perfect, but as you can see, I can transition from going from myself to looking forward without a lot of fuss, you know. And if I had to do a, like a cut and then go into that, it wouldn't be so bad. So it's just mounted in the corner. You know, it's not, you know, super high quality, but it's not that bad either. It just reminds me of those old little lamp kind of, you know, gooseneck things that we used to have. And they lasted for a long time. They didn't break. So I don't think it's going to break. So anyways, I'm going to go to the downward shot now of the uh, Sony ZV-E10 and show you what that looks like. So I'm going to grab a box here. So... All this stuff is on my bed right now because I've got boxes. Ugh. So this is a box of the bicycle mount. So I got a bicycle mount for the action and it already has the little magnetic clip built into it. So as I showed you before, with the Ulanzi mount, which the only problem I have with these is that they're expensive and I also have the same beef with the small rig and other magnetic mounts so i can pull this off and then you've got you can buy these separately but uh so if i wanted to swap this with the pocket three i would do it that way and if i wanted to put this on the bicycle mount 
then I would just separate it from here. And then if I wanted to put it on another thing with the same type of magnetic mount. So this is another, uh, like a selfie handle. Whoops, got it backwards. So it'll say the DJI on the on this one. This is an actual DJI one. It doesn't have the folding fingers. And the ones without the folding fingers are $19. And to me, that's still expensive. These ones should be probably 6 bucks. And the other one should be 12 Like, come on, guys. Like, really? In this bad economy, this is what you're charging. You're charging $30? Come on. So we have uh, the easy... So I can swap this with that and the other one. And I did a video on that, so I'm not going to repeat myself. But you get what I'm saying. Um, there we go. And by the way, these little tripods, the ones that come with the DJI uh, combo kit, and you put this on a ball, one of these little ball heads, and that's actually a pretty good vlogging setup. So it's not bad. And uh, sorry, it keeps wanting to track my uh, my face. So if I go up, it'll, it'll track me. So, and that's um, you know that's pretty much it. Except for we're going to now go to the uh, downward shot. So let's cut to that. And I'm going to uh, before we do that though. I mentioned that I have three of these microphones, these DJI mics. So when the DJI mic is glowing blue, it means that it's a Bluetooth connection, which is kind of nice. Blue means Bluetooth. If it is glowing green like this one, it is connected to the receiver on the 2.4 gigahertz. So I do like these microphones for that reason. So if I look over here on there, I can see that the... Um, yeah, I can see there it is. I can see my microphone levels. Okay, so my microphone levels are there. And um, the other nice thing is because this camera is on a gimbal. There, I got two microphones on. Uh, so because this camera is on a gimbal, if I bump the desk or anything like that, it's not so bad. It'll smooth things out. That's great. Now we're going to go to the... Uh, just the demonstration purposes. So when you have your camera mounted in this fashion, just remember everything is reverse. So if you want everything to face the other way, you've got to kind of flip it upside down. So I just push my tablet forward a little bit and then I can take this, I can zoom it out a little bit there and we can get that. So I'm going to record this now. Oh, there we go. And when I hear that little beep, it's telling me that we're recording. I'm recording to the uh, SD card. And then later I'm going to use my SD card reader, plug this using this little, the thing that came with the, the Google phones. You know, I'm gonna plug that into the tablet and transfer my files. And I have a file editor transfer um, program that I use for that. Now when I transfer things with my phone over to the tablet, I just use a thing called QuickShare and that works beautifully because it'll say, hey, do you want to transfer this to the tablet? You just click on that and it just starts to transfer it and everything is transferred very quickly. So. And the other thing, too, is that the DJI and the Action 4, when you're using the MIMO map, they transfer the files wirelessly very quickly as well. Which is what brings me to this. The Sony does not. So the, the Sony does not have fast wireless transfer. So, and uh, that kind of sucks. Um... So unfortunately, I have to pull the SD card out, put it in the reader, and then do it that way. And even that takes probably just as long, if not longer, than if I was to do it wirelessly with the um, DJI Osmo Pocket 3. This camera that I'm looking into transfers data, I think, at 120 megabits per second. Yeah, 
120 megabits per second. That's pretty darn quick. And uh, I believe the other one does too. Fast charging, you know, can't complain. So this is the downward setup. And, um, uh, you know, uh, that is, um, you know, you can zoom in. Uh, there's, there's the zoom in there. And uh, let me just uh, bring it in a little bit uh, closer. So if you really wanted to zoom it in, that's all the way. This is with the kit lens. Now I can bring the camera closer down if I wanted to. It's adjustable. I can also back it off more by raising up those that pole on um, on the uh, what is it the this pole here is adjustable on the height so um, and it came with the phone by the way the phone mount and the um, yeah I got no complaints on it it uh, it works good it's got a QR code for WeChat don't know if you need that but I'm overall pretty happy with it and it wasn't that expensive uh, and that's the thing is some of these uh, some of these downward rig setups are well over a hundred bucks and um, uh, I don't think you need to get into that kind of money and you know, unless you're really you know I guess if you have a lot of extra money kicking around maybe but you know other than that you know um, you know I really um, I like I kind of like this setup. I was just going to get another one of these arms and do the downward setup with that, but it's just not strong enough for that camera. Um, you know, it, it's okay in the in the other configuration that I have because I have it kind of mounted to a like a wall uh, uh, a shelf, and it supports it in a different fashion. So, so anyways, be safe at work, and I will see you with the next video. Take care.